Hey, what's up, you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you a quick review of the uh, Lifetime TV movie Lizzie Borden Took an Axe. Uh, this, of course, uh, starred Christina Ricci. Uh, I may be mispronouncing the name, but as Lizzie Borden, of course, and this is a biopic sort of uh, mystery thriller type of uh, film. Um, I watched this off of my girlfriend's uh, recommendation. Um, you know, she uh, had watched it on Netflix, and I did the same. Um, you know, th and there are horror elements in it once you sort of get into, uh, you know, seeing what she, when she actually does the deed, you know, when you actually see her swinging the axe and stuff like that. Um, so I watched it last night, and it was actually not too bad. You know, I did like it for the most part. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot. This video is going to be overly long. Um, it came out back in 2014. And I know when people see uh, the fact that it was from a uh, lifetime, uh, some people are probably going to back off just because of that. Uh, but, you know, I, I still enjoyed it. You know, uh, I remember watching what's probably more of a stereotypical lifetime movie in uh, Killing Daddy. Um, but I even like that, well, mainly because of Elizabeth Gillies' performance. But. I mean, I don't think a Lifetime thing was, like, the stereotype is too apparent in this one. If there is one, it, I didn't really see too much of it in this movie. Um, the highlight of it, of course, was uh, Christina Ricci as Lizzie Borden, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, most of you guys probably know the story of Lizzie Borden. You know, she was, uh, you know, a young American woman tried and sort of acquitted for the murders of her family and uh, stepmother. Um... I guess I was back in 1892, I think. Um, so a lot of it revolves around the mystery of it, and for a little bit, you don't uh, fully know if she did it or not. Um, but pretty soon into the movie, kind of, it's pretty obvious that she did. Um, and she really tries to uh, manipulate people and just sort of, uh, you know, plays all the cards she can. And once it's pretty uh, obvious and clear and put out there. Um, that she did do it, you know, the rest of it sort of revolves around the trial of it all. Whether she's going to be found innocent or guilty, um, or, you know, not guilty, whatever you want to say. Um, and, you know, some people bash this movie I've seen because, you know, they talk about how there's so many, like, historical inaccuracies, how, uh, Christ Christina Ricci's too attractive to be Lizzie Borden, um, or how there's just different little details about a trial or how certain events played out um, that aren't exact from what actually happened. But really, it's entertainment. You know, you gotta calm down about that stuff sometimes. And it's not like they're saying this is what actually happened, you know, play by play. Uh, you know, they acknowledged, uh, you know, if you look into when they were actually making the movie, they acknowledged that they took some liberties, you know, creative liberties to sort of, like, craft their own uh, version and sort of, like, imaginary, like, fantasy way they wanted to show things and uh, things of that nature. And the same thing happened in the uh, little mini-series they did after the movie, which I'll probably be watching soon, but we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um... You know, even Christina Ricci, she described the movie in the series, you know, as being self-aware, campy, and tone-in-cheek. Um, so, you know, the liberties they took, and they know it's their own version. You guys should just accept it as that, so stop complaining so much about the historical inaccuracies or whatever it is. They know, okay, and it's a show, you know, you, you enjoy it for what it is, not, I don't know, whatever. Um, but overall, it was pretty good. Um, you know, it wasn't, I won't say it was amazing or anything, but I think it did what it was setting out to do. Um, the acting, for the most part, was pretty good. Um, like I said, Christina Ricci was definitely a highlight of it. She really, I felt like, embodied sort of like that personality and sort of like a distant, like, uh, creepy sort of just like weird uh, personality that she was meant to have in the role. I think she really did well with that. And, you know, again, she's not hard to look at, so that helped, too. <laughs> Some people are going to complain about that, but... Um, the rest of the cast besides her is all right. You know, no other, like, real standouts besides her. But I did like a couple of the other performances, in particular from uh, Stephen McHattie, uh, 
who played her father in the movie, and where I know him recently from. He's done tons of stuff, but recently I've seen him as Vaughn in The Strain, um, so it's kind of cool to see him in this. I wish you would have seen more of the father in this movie. Um, you know, he was only around for a very limited uh, period of time before we sort of yeah, see him with his uh, face basically axed in. <laughs> um, but he still played it well enough, I thought. And then the guy who, uh, I think it was Greg Henry, um, I think he's the one who uh, played the uh, attorney or like the uh, guy who is basically trying to prove that uh, Lizzie was guilty. Um, I thought Greg Henry, yeah, that's his name, he did a good job. Um, so Christina Ricci, Greg Henry, and Sue McCaddy were probably the highlights of the cast. And Billy Campbell. Um, he played uh, a friend of her father's who was trying to actually defend her. He was recently on the show called Helix. He was fine too. Um, and uh, also, who the girl who played her sister, um, I think, Clay Duval. Clay Duval. I think that's what her name is. <laughs> yeah, she was fine too. Um, although she looks. You know, quite a bit older than Lizzie for some reason, even though the actresses aren't that far apart in age. Uh, Lizzie just I mean, uh, Emma just looks quite a bit older than her for some reason, I don't know. But, uh, anyway. Um, so, you know, decent performances all around. Christina Ricci really, uh, makes it, though. It, she's the one that kind of holds your attention, obviously, because it's about her. And she did pretty well with it. And the movie itself, you know, it plays out like a mystery thriller, like I sort of talked about before. Um, like I said, going with the trial, and then there's a certain point where you know for sure she did it, you know. We see you know, more flashes for actually using the axe or hatchets or whatever you want to call it. Um, and, you know, then there was a couple, you know, like, sort of stupid moments in the movie, though. Uh, you know, like how when, uh, her sister finds her burning the dress, you know, that suspected, uh, blood on her that the, they wanted for evidence, you know, that's kind of made obvious, I thought that was kind of a stupid move on her part, um, and there are a couple other things like that, but, you know, that, that kind of just rolled off, off of me eventually, um, and really, again, they're not taking themselves too seriously, either, so they're not meant to be, like, really serious in every little detail of it, and every little thing being super intelligent, either, so I can't really blame them too much, I guess, um, I do wish that the motivations were a little bit more clear um, as to why she killed her uh, dad and stepmother. Um, you know, maybe I know I don't know too much about the case. I don't know how much was ever actually found out about it, and maybe that's kind of done on purpose. You know, maybe they, in the movie they kind of wanted to keep it more of like that m mystery, creepy, weird thing that she often just snapped and decided to just you know axe those people apart. Um, so maybe that was on purpose, I didn't really find out why exactly or see, like, enough motivation, but I still would have liked to have seen more of her psyche and more of the build-up, perhaps. I think it would have helped a little bit. Um, you know, he did get, like, a couple weird vibes from her father at certain points, you know. We got the sense that he would be kind of a tight-wound, uh, douche <laughs> at some points, uh, and we got, like, but, like, maybe a bit of an incest vibe. I don't know if that was true or not either, but... It seemed like her father was almost a little bit tempted by her at certain points, which, which was kind of weird. Um, you know, so there are things like that, but, you know, nothing that really showed that she should, you know, murder them or anything. Um, and, her, and her stepmother is a, kind of a bitch, too. Uh, but again, I would like to see more of the motivations of it, but again, it's probably playing on uh, how little we actually know anyway. Um, I and mean, also in real life, I don't think anyone was ever actually convicted of it. I could be wrong. And then he also had like another guy murder someone with an axe as the trial was going on, so that caused some other confusion. Um, you know, so the plot, you know, itself is very simple, uh, very, I don't want to say by the books, but kind of straightforward with going through the trial and the whole mystery of it all and stuff. My favorite moments of it personally were actually seeing the flashes of her, uh, you know, killing her father and the mother uh, as a horror fan. That's definitely the best uh, part. Seeing Christina and Ricky come down with the axe and seeing blood splatter and stuff. That was pretty cool. Um, and of course, the. And also, when she actually tells her sister she did it, that was a pretty uh, creepy scene as well. I, I like that quite a bit. 
Um, of course, she's said to be not guilty at the end, and uh, we basically just see uh, Lizzie whisper in uh, Emma's ear, and then we see the flashes for doing all of it, and we just... This is actually a pretty good performance from uh, Clea Duvall here, her sister, um, just seeing her, you know, just the tears going down her eyes and how, like, uh, uncomfortable she is getting and stuff. It was pretty good, and then her sister just leaves after that and we we see something that says you know they never seen each other again or they never really cared to um so that's where that was left that was a pretty good ending to it um and then you know, Lizzie walks outside and we get sort of the rhyme we see three children uh, jumping rope uh, sort of reminded me of Freddy Krueger <laughs> uh, but we get the Lizzie Borden rhyme Lizzie Borden took an axe she gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw that what she had done, she gave her father 41. Lizzie Borden got away for her crime she did not pay. Um, so I like that quite a bit too. It was creepy and definitely had that uh, nice type of vibe to it. Uh, again, reminded me of like the Freddy Krueger one, two, you know. I don't want to say all three. No. One, two, Freddy's coming for me. It kind of felt like that, so I approved of that part of it. Um, and something else I should probably touch on uh, before I close off the video. Um, people also complained heavily about the uh, soundtrack in this movie or the music or the score that went along with it. You know, it was uh, modern music, you know, it wasn't. You know, it's a period type of uh, mystery thriller. And so people were a little bit put off that they had, like, modern music into it. And I kind of would be too normally because uh, people are probably wanting that slower, more. Uh, slow burn type of build up with uh, you know more old school music or more simple music and I get where people are coming from on that but I do think people are bitching way too much about it for me personally it didn't hurt the movie as much as, as I uh, thought it might um, like immediately when I watched the trailer even I almost liked the uh, type of vibe and tone it sort of gave it you know I think the I almost think the modern music sort of helped with the, you know, how crazy or, like, rattled her mind was. You know, it really gave it a nice vibe of the music that went with it. Um, I almost think it worked for it in a certain way. So I actually ended up having no problem with it. I actually think it worked. Um, but that's just me, I guess. My girlfriend actually didn't mind it either, though, so I guess it isn't. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so overall, I thought it's a... This is a pretty good one. You know, it wasn't uh, mind-blowing or anything, but it did what it was supposed to. And we got a really good performance from Christine and Ricky and some other uh, decent performances in there, too. And it does make me intrigued enough to watch the uh, eight-episode series they did after this. I know it got canceled, um, but I'm wondering where they left it off in that, so I might check out the series. And when, if I do, I will give you my thoughts on it. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the movie overall. Not bad. You know, I actually did like it. Christina Ricci was really good. The rest of the cast was fine. Um, did have some creepy, uh, weird type moments I think worked for. The score, I actually think, really worked for the movie. And anyway, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, my next videos will be, of course, the review of The 100, as I do every week, along with the Vampire Divers and Originals uh, in a day or two. Um, they will be late since I'm working, but I'll get those out to you guys as soon as I can within the next few days, as usual. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and thepriniceworldo.com. Peace.